Transit 10R80 CDF hub. A little bit of play. A little bit more than a little bit of play. Definitely a little bit more than a little bit of play. These get replaced because you should not be able to see that hole. This sleeve in here just slid so far that way that it is causing pressure bleed off or some form of problem. Can't remember the exact problem. Why it causes it to harsh shift, delay shift, all that good stuff. Another way you can see when these tell these have slid is on this uh, ring ring gear there are these teflon seals and when this sleeve slides it can blow out this seal so i'm going to show how that comes apart completely start by getting the clutches out of it So far, it won't look too bad in this one. If you saw my video on that one, the clutches in that one were far worse than these ones. And these don't look terrible. Fluid's all dirty and nasty, but these don't look too terrible. They still have a bit of a ridge left on the clutch material. These are all getting replaced anyway. Whenever we replace these drums or these CDF hubs, we usually replace all the clutches and the steel so that come as a part of this. that one one of these is what blew up one of these just completely disintegrated and even on these you can see these got a little hot around the edges the clutch material looks okay but these definitely got a little on the hot side Once all the clutches are out of it, you're left with just the hub. We're going to tear this down further. We have a hammer and a cheap screwdriver. Start by smacking this retaining ring off of it. Don't lose that. You're gonna need that. We don't replace that. Usually.
And some people have a little snap press or a bench press they like to use. I personally prefer using one of these. It just makes things a little bit easier in my opinion. Line it up with your snap ring groove. Use whatever spacers you have available to get, a, get it centered. Press that first piston down. So that way you can get the snap ring out of it. Now there are several ways you can go about getting that snap ring out. I like using these. This seems to work pretty good. It's kind of what they're designed for. And you don't want to lose these. These are specific to whatever clutch they came out of. So I like to put them back with the clutch piles. Makes it a little harder to get them mixed up. These two of these snap rings are very similar to one another. Once you get the snap ring out of it, release the press. Get your tool and your spacer out. Some people like to put air through this to get that bottom piston out, or the bottom part of that piston out. Personally, I don't care to memorize where those holes are, and you can just kind of do this. It'll come out eventually. And once again, just put this back with the clutch pile. And repeat for the next two. So since I have it kind of set up for it already, we're gonna get this one in. Snap ring. Press the piston. move snap ring. See, that's how that's supposed to normally go. I usually don't fight you that bad. Take snap ring, put it with pile. noise. And finally the F clutch piston. This one requires a bit more of a different tool than that. This one uses what I like to call the spider. This little doodad. I'm fairly certain if you were creative or intuitive in any way shape or form you could find a way to either make your own tool or create one that works and does about the same thing. Now, I work, happen to work at a Ford dealership, so I just have this tool. Same premise, line up snap ring groove. Take a order of spacers if you're choosing. Snap ring with pile. Smack piston out of it. And there is your now stripped CDF hub. Now 
I'm going to be making a separate video on assembling this because there's more to assembling this than there is dismantling it. It could be a bit longer.